Hi, this is David. In the last couple of videos, I talked about Azure Monitor and Application Insights. Today, I'm going to go a little bit further here because I showed you how to configure Azure services so they would connect to Application Insights and automatically log information as your service was being used. But sometimes you want a little bit more control over what your application is doing and what it's logging and when it's logging and uh, you know the, the type of information it's logging. Uh, and the good news is that when you need that that kind of control, you can write code to do it because Microsoft provides a, an SDK for application insights. In fact, they provide a number of SDKs. There's one for .NET, .NET Core, and Java, and uh, Python, JavaScript, Node, a whole bunch of SDKs. In this video, I'm going to focus on the .NET Core SDK. And I've got an application I'm going to show you in a second, but first I'm going to go to the Azure portal. I've already logged in here. I'm going to go to monitor and I'll go to application insights. And this is the application that I created in an earlier video. If you want to watch that, it's an application insights application. Um, and I need a couple of pieces of information from here. I need this inf instrumentation key. I copy it and just paste it into this text document here and I need this connection string. I'll copy that and save that here as well. And if you look closely, you'll see the instrumentation key actually contains or is actually contained in the connection string. All right, so those pieces of information are important. Uh, and now I'm going to go to my application. I have a an ASP.NET Core MVC application that I've just this is just a scaffolding one that I, I've created. I actually have a video on how to do that using the command line. There's not much in here. Um, if I say oh, .NET run, it should run the application right here on localhost 5235. Let me just go to that right here and I gotta go find that. It's right there. There it is. Um, and it's just two pages. There's a home page, which is displaying here, and then the privacy page is at home slash privacy. And that's it. Let me just go ahead and close that and go back to my code. Control C to stop that. Uh, what I want to do is I want to add to this application the SDK, the App Insights SDK. And I can do that if I were in the full blown Visual Studio, Studio instead of VS Code, then I could right click and manage it that way, or I could run it from the command line, which I'm going to do here. .NET add package, and there's the package. Microsoft.extensions.logging.applicationinsights, and there's the source at API NuGet org v3 index JSON right here. And this adds the application insights SDK to my current project. Um, so now it has the capability of connecting to application insights, but I have to tell it where, and that's where the instrumentation key and connection string come into play. Here in the app settings, I want to add a section for application insights. And that takes a value of an argument, and the argument is an instrumentation key, and of course the instrumentation key isn't all X's and dashes. It is the instrumentation key that I copied and saved right here. Grab that and put that in there. So now my application knows which key to, which key to use. Uh, I also want to put something in the startup key to initialize this, or the startup program. There used to be a startup.cs, but it's been simplified with ASP.NET Core. And so I want to add a, uh, a line here that I'm just going to copy and paste here. But basically, this builder right here can do things like add services and add application insights. That's what I do here. And in that, I'm going to set in some configuration here. Among the configuration is the connection string and the connection string. I've already copied it. And saved it here, so let me just grab that. And paste it into here. You could also add some more options, but I'm, I'm not going to. Here. Let's keep this as simple as possible. OK. Um, and now this will work. This is I've added this here. The builder understands that the logging is going to be the application insights logging. And in fact, if I look at my controllers. 
at the very top of the controller, I'm injecting a log uh, a logger. And if I didn't add that, by default, it would just inject the the default logger, which just logs to the console and nothing else. Uh, but because dependency inject is supported in here automatically, then I can inject my application insights logger. And now this logger is going to be whatever I do with it, it's going to automatically log to application insights. That's the idea. So to get to log, I need to add a little bit of code. And the simplest way I know if to do that is just I'm going to add one more page to this. You saw the index and the privacy page. I'm going to add one more. I'm going to call it uh, log log stuff. That's CS. HTML. That's my view. And if you know anything about MVC, you have a view and you have a controller. And the view is just doesn't it's just some display stuff, maybe some placeholders. So nothing special here. Just display the title at the top and an H1 tag and then a paragraph with just some text inside of it. Um, the real code is in the controller. And the controller right here, I've got a method for an index. And the privacy, and they just affirm the default view, which means when the index method runs, display in this view right here, the, the view of the same name. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to create a public I action result log stuff. And in here, I will return a view. Oops. I actually had some, it was suggesting some code here, which is pretty awesome. Right there. All right. It'll return a view. And you can see right here, log information. This is a log message from the home control. So this underscore logger, which is an I logger interface, which is what the application insights logger uses, it has a method called log information. And instead of just logging out to the console, it's also going to log out to application insights. And I can do that if I say underscore logger dot log error. This is an error message from the console. I like this. It's kind of reading my mind here. Uh, underscore logger dot log warning. This is a warning message. Uh, log critical. That's like a super error, etc. So come in here. The errors have a or rather logging information has a severity level. You know whether it's just informational. Uh, these are kind of out of order. I probably should put the warning there and then the error and then the critical error on here. So when this thing runs, whatever this page displays, it should log these four messages. All right, let's try this again. We're going to run that same thing. It's first going to build it first. Run it. Come back to here. And if I refresh this, I should see. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I've got to add one more. I should add a link to that page. Um, I could just. It's really the same as this. I could just add it here. Log stuff How about that. There we go. So now there's some there's my page right here. What we don't see is the code under the hood running here. I'll refresh that a couple of times. And that code that was running. Is this these four lines of code? So I hit it, I think, two or three times. And so I should see multiple messages in application insights. Now, application insights is designed to be scalable. So this doesn't happen instantly. You know, there's a whole queuing mechanism that takes place so that, that if lots of, you know, thousands of users and thousands of websites are trying to hit at the same time, it doesn't overwhelm it. It kind of queues up and then eventually gets put in here. So it's near real time, but it is not real time. So if I go over to application insights back here, I'll check right now in the logs. Here, I'll close this. And really what I want, this table right here, traces is the one that I want. And I'm going to say for traces, uh, I'm going to order by timestamp descending. So this is where I'm logging is to this table right here. That's all the info. I can, I can do more than that right here. And it, it, it hasn't shown up. Or has it? Let's see. Uh, it has shown up. Yeah, so here they are. These are the messages right here. So I hit it a few times. And there's those four messages. This is, a critical mess, mess, this is a critical message. Expand that. This is an error message. This is a warning. This is the log. And I did, I did it three times, I think. I refreshed it three times. So those four error messages end up showing up three times. The severity level indicates whether it's a critical, an error, 
warning or information. What's the idea behind this? In fact, there's a whole bunch of information that's being logged in here um, that you can see. And the, I'll continue to get this information even after I deploy the application to Azure. But what's the beauty is that I could test it without deploying it to Azure. I can I can just run this thing locally. And because I've told it where the application insights are in Azure, it knows how to find it. And I think the only thing I really wanted to point out here beyond this is that this, I did have one bad practice in here. Don't do this at home, kids. When I said in the control or rather in the program here, uh, this right here, I shouldn't hard code that. We should be pulling that out of like a, a key somewhere, a key vault, something like that. Um, uh, but for demo purposes, it, it's probably okay. But in real life, you definitely, that's, that's a secure thing. You want to keep that safe uh, and away from Frying hands. Don't want to check that into source control for sure. Uh, so in this video, I've shown you how to use the application insights.net SDK to log information into your application insights application. This is David. Thank you for watching.